Hey everybody, Sarah here. So today we are going to go through the very grueling task of explaining the difference between strawberry, hypo, coral, salmon, what do all of these mean? I'm gonna get into it. Before we start, I just wanna say thank you to all of our members on this channel who are helping financially contribute to all of this. You guys are amazing. We wouldn't be able to do it without you. I'm gonna list you over here, let you know that I really, really appreciate you. I also want to thank Reptilinks. You can go to reptilinks.com and use my code SarahSnake27. It's also linked in the description if you would like to just have it automatically put in for you. You get $5 off, I get a percentage, and so it helps you, it helps me, it helps this channel. Thank you guys so much. Thank you Reptilinks so much. Also remember, I have a website, and if you're interested in corn snakes and corn snake accessories, especially corn snake books, I have two corn snake morph books that I have written. There are ebooks on my website right now, so you're welcome to go uh, check those out if you would like more information information on corn snake morphs. So let's go into this whole debacle. I'm going to try to start from the beginning and work our way to current day uh, because I think that's going to be the best way to explain where everything went wrong. So way back in the day when corn snakes were being bred kind of early on, they'd probably been in captivity breeding for maybe a couple decades. People started obviously having their own very specific lines that they wanted to breed and sell as being their line of X, Y, or Z. Back when there were hardly any breeders, there's maybe a handful, maybe a few dozen breeders, they were all big names and they all sort of had their own line of things. And so we obviously had Kathy, Kathy Love who had her love line, but then Lee Abbott had his line of like Okatee. So there's a love line Okatee, the Abbott line of Okatee. And so we had a lot of names attached to different lines of things. And that's where we get into the JMG, that's Jeff Galewood. And he had his own version of coral, which he called salmon. Now, all of these salmons uh, also included hypo, all or most of them did. And if they didn't like, uh, like actually include hypo, like a hypo snow or a hypo anery, which is a ghost, then they at least had hypo in the line. And so a lot of people thought that hypo is actually what was causing these pinks, especially in the snows. So people were breeding hypo melanistic A into snows, expecting all of them to be pink, and then they weren't. Why? And that's another part of the reason, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, that uh, JMG became as popular as they did with their coral and salmon lines uh, because other people were trying to produce the same look and could not do it with the G mutations that they were told were in these snakes. There was also the strawberry mutation starting to come out of everything, like come out of the woodwork around the same time, like shortly before that. And so people knew that there was a slightly pinker looking version of hypomelanism. And so a lot of people thought probably it was this strawberry mutation, which is allelic to our typical hypomelanistic type A. They thought that was what was causing this extra pink in the ghost forms. So we had this like hypo snow, meaning coral snow, and then we had strawberry ghost, meaning coral ghost. And then people started using the term strawberry snow to mean like strawberry plus amel plus anery. Uh, and those were not pink for some reason. Like people were very confused, but then it was kind of like, well, uh, you know, maybe it's just a different line of strawberry. Maybe JMG just has his own like magic touch. And that's why, that's why he's able to have these very, very pink snakes. So it went that way for decades. For literally decades, everybody thought that hypo going into snows meant coral snows. And that's what they were called. They were called coral snows. And a lot of people still like to use the term coral snow to mean hypo snow uh, because that is the old school word for it. That That is just what they called it. It's kind of like the term like almond, even though the combination of caramel and lavender doesn't look anything like an almond. Um, it's that's the term that's the term that we have that's the term that we use because of some old school terms that were out there that's the term that we ended up with for that it doesn't necessarily make it like make sense it just it just is so when you're buying coral snows uh just make sure that you know exactly what gene mutations you're buying that's my like biggest advice to anyone who's getting into anything that says coral salmon neon champagne anything like that so we're at the point where we have the we, like, we know strawberry exists and we know it's different from hypomelanistic type A, um, but we also are kind of learning that hypomelanistic type A is not actually what's causing extra pinks, but still everybody now is thinking, okay, well, it must be strawberry, right? Strawberry must be the thing causing all these extra pinks. Uh, and so people would get these strawberries and they started breeding them into other things. 
only to find out that like something like a strawberry annery just kind of looks like an an extra amount like hypomelanistic annery like it just is a lighter colored looking ghost that has maybe some more pastelish colors to it but it's not an actual like pink snake it's not the pink that we were getting from jmg so once again remember if you're buying anything strawberry we're still in the phase where a lot of older breeders i don't want to say older as an age but like older has in has been around longer breeders are using the term strawberry to mean extra pinks I'm not trying to call anybody out but if you see a snake that's extra pink and it's labeled strawberry, be aware. Just be aware. If it's labeled strawberry and it's extra pink and there's no mention of red factor or coral anything, just, just be aware. So people started taking the sort of JMG stock and breaking it down. Like let's breed a JMG uh, coral snow to a normal and see what happens. What, what happens when we do that? So if you take like the best like JMG salmon, snow that you can find and you breed it to a normal people are finding that half of those normals look like normal normals and then about the other half of the normals are a little bit more pink uh so why is that well then there was very for a very brief period of time uh thinking maybe that like oh maybe this normal that i bred this to was het hypo and so maybe it's hypo still that's causing this but after many many test breedings we find out of course it's not hypo that's causing extra pinks and not really probably strawberry either. It is true that strawberry appears to be a little more pink, a little bit more red than your typical hypo, but uh, in my opinion, it's because hypo melanistic type A also has a tendency to reduce some other pigments as well. A lot of hypo melanistic snakes that I see are just sort of very dull, like they just don't have that much color overall. They do have the majority of the reds, but they're just not as brightly colored as a normal. But my opinion is hypo melanistic type A just takes out more of other pigments and strawberry only takes out melanin, some melanin. And I think that strawberry actually takes out more melanin than hypotype A does. But since hypotype A takes out some of the other colors as well, that just makes strawberry look a little bit more bright. Again, my opinion, but it has pretty much been proven that strawberry does not actually add pinks to anything that it's mixed with. So then the question was, well, then what is causing all of these pinks? And the answer is red factor. Red factor is causing the pinks. Amazing. I did a video very recently on the difference between red factor and red coat. I'll link that above for you guys to go check out. Not going to talk about red coat in this video. Red coat does not add reds, but you can check that other video out if you would like to know details on that. But as far as red factor goes, red factor actually does add pinks and reds into the snakes that wouldn't normally be there. Now there are multiple different types of red factor that we know of. There's cherry, which is separate from everything else. Um, Don Soderberg has been refining cherry for a long time and it is actually a separate mutation from everything else that we consider to be red factor or coral. So we have this like red factor umbrella and underneath the umbrella we have anything that can be labeled as coral and we have cherry. Uh, and anything that's labeled as coral right now hasn't been separated out into other mutations, but we're pretty sure that there are multiple different mutations that all kind of do the same thing, similar to how cherry is also a red factor mutation. We think that there's others, uh, but no one has actually like refined them. And so we have like the coral complex over here and then cherry is its own separate thing. Cherry is still relatively uncommon, so it really doesn't count in this discussion, but just sort of making you aware. So if we kind of go back through the timeline, we have uh, JMG has his line of um, coral snows and ghosts, uh, all of which actually probably did have hypomelanistic type A in them. Uh, and the pink was presumably coming from that hypo. But then when it was sort of test bred and found out that the hypo wasn't causing the pinks, uh, then everybody thought, well, maybe it's strawberry that's causing the pinks, uh, since strawberry sort of came on the scene a little bit later than hypo type A. But then people were also refining strawberry and kind of finding out that mixing strawberry with something else did not really add that many more pinks either. And now we have sort of crossed over into the phase of now we know that there's this other dominant gene mutation that actually adds pinks and reds that we call coral or red factor. I like to say coral um, if we know that it's not cherry. I typically just say coral, but sometimes I'll just say red factor. Uh, however, I think that we just do need to be careful with our terminology, that's all. So at the end of the day, we have different mutations. We have hypo type A, strawberry, both of which do not add pinks or reds. And then we have 
red factor and or coral, which is separate, which does add the pinks and the reds. Uh, and so now a lot of different breeders are able to reproduce with the JMG line originally started, and that is adding these pinks and reds in. And you can see how it would be very, very confusing to a lot of different breeders who were being told this whole time that their their coral snow was a hypo snow, uh, breeding it to hypos and not finding any hypo, or um, breeding it to another like snow head hypo, but like not really getting that many colorful babies, etc. Very confusing to begin with, uh, the, but the timeline I think is very interesting. It is one of the most complex timelines of any uh, mutation or any morph ever so far. We don't exactly know where the original, like, red factors came from. So multiple lines came out of Don Soderbergh's collection. Uh, he had his red mask, uh, and he also had his um, cherry, obviously. And then there are other lines that I mentioned earlier, like neon and champagne, which are red factor types, but we don't really know if they're the same thing as the typical coral that we see a lot, or if they're different. We just don't know. That is the story between coral versus salmon versus hypo versus strawberry uh, to kind of give you an idea of like why all of this seems so messed up. The conclusion is red factor adds pinks and reds, hypo and strawberry do not and neither does red coat but that's a different video. So thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoy it. hope you learned something. Remember like, subscribe, share if you did learn something or if you enjoyed this. Appreciate you. See you in the next video.